Welcome back to Timeless Merchant. I'm Morgan, got my brother Sonder behind the camera, and thank you for tuning in. Last week, we dropped our first two episodes, and it was nerve wracking. It was really nerve wracking, actually. Really appreciate every one of you who watched it, who liked it, who shared it. Um, means a lot to us. And for the people who subscribe, really, really, that is, that is one of the best things. Thank you guys very much for subscribing. Almost 300 views and 30 subscribers. Yeah, couldn't have asked for a better start. And if you want to, you can follow Timeless Merchant on Twitter, Instagram, and, and Facebook. Got a page going there. And that's if you want to just pay attention to what's going on. When I'm on the field getting some stuff, when I'm going to an estate sale, I'll be posting some updates there. I'll be sharing some pictures from the estate sales. Just a little bit of everything behind the scenes kind of things. For those who are new, Timeless Merchant is all about bringing home all the things I found at estate sales, yard sales, flea markets. I bring them home here, I review them, I study them, and, and share what I find and what I learn with you. Today, everything we're reviewing is from an online auction, from Auction Ninja. Yeah, let's dive into it and see what I got. All right, so first up, I got myself eight glasses, eight port wine glasses, and again, it's Waterford. And the pattern this time on these are called Traymore. And it's just a very simple design. They kind of look like the ones I had last time, but they're not the same pattern. So the reason I got them, well, first of all, I paid $47 for eight of them. I got seven here and then, Sandra, you got one of them. Last Christmas, our dad gave us port wine as part of the Christmas gift. And I realized I didn't have any glasses to drink out of. So, so I was looking for port wine glasses and during this auction, I saw them. And that's kind of how I got drawn into this auction. I saw these and I was like, oh, I need them. Ended up winning them and I'm very happy with them. They're nice, fun, fun size. And that's the amount of port wine you're supposed to drink. And again, if you look under Waterford, yeah, you will see, if you come over here, Sandra, you will see that they have an acid etch mark saying Waterford under it. Nice to know that what you're having is actually Waterford. It's not a lookalike, it's not a replica. And these, these are gently used because you still see the watermark pretty good in there. I also saw this decanter and it looked like it had the same pattern as these glasses. But when I got it, I started studying it and comparing it with some patterns online. And I actually think this pattern is called Mave or Mav. And it's very nice. It's a classy looking decanter. Although this one, I probably overpaid a little bit for. I paid $118. And again, I always check it when I bring things back. I check how much they sell for online, how much they sell for new and used. And I see that these decanters, similar to this one and pretty much the same exact one, go from anywhere from $50, $60, $70. So I overpaid. I, I think I overpaid, but I like it. So very happy with this little lot here. The next thing up I have is a cocktail shaker from the 50s. Paid $23 for it. Nice little design of a flower going on here. And actually we got a little flower theme going on today, which is, eh, it wasn't planned, but that's how it turned out. Under here, Trade Continental Mark, hand wrought 530. I don't know what the 530 stands for, maybe it's the model. If we open up and just a quick peek in here, we got this cork going on. And in here too, you screw up this top. This little piece of cork. Probably just to keep everything sealed. So, yeah, $23. Mm. Sondra likes it. You said you liked yeah, it, right? I thought it was kind of impulsive of me. It, let's get a last final good look of how this looks like. And then we're gonna go to town on this bad boy. And we're gonna shine this up royally so. So by the time we're done with it, I hope it's gonna be a killer piece and I will sleep better at night knowing I paid $23 for this and it's actually a cool piece. All right, let's bring this one back to life.
This one I only paid $11 for, and it's, it's nice. It's wicked heavy. And it, again, it has the etch mark under it somewhere. I thought I saw it earlier. Um, yeah, I found it. Let's see the proof. Proof's in the pudding right here. Yeah, it's in, you can see it's a nice etch mark there. Very distinct. It's a nice piece. It's heavy. And yeah, I, I, I don't smoke. However, I, I will smoke maybe a cigar a year, maybe two cigars a year around Christmas time or New Year's Eve. And I just thought while I'm drinking my port wine after dinner, New Year's Eve, light up a cigar, my brothers, my friends, family, and then just enjoy it. So very happy with this buy. I already got that one decanter and I'm, I'm definitely on a barware kick, glass kick lately. First it was the shape that just I liked it's very simple then the description said it's it's signed and that gets me very excited when things are signed it means the maker or the artist put his or her signature on it so you go okay you can trace the item you can find out who made it when they made it perhaps yada 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 so i tried looking up and do you want to see this signature Let's see it. i tried looking up and i can't figure out what it says Hard to tell. I did spend, I probably spent like 45 minutes trying to figure out who it was, looking it up online, trying to research the name, came up and empty handed. So, so I don't know who made it, unfortunately. It's still a nice piece though. Put some red wine, you and your girl, you and your man having a little red wine dinner, a little red wine, for example. So, and this one I paid $43 for, 43 I think that's acceptable for this decanter. I think that was an okay buy. Oh, one thing I was gonna say, if you're a reseller, then I think you would do a lot better on this. Reselling this, $11, I, I, think you could, I think you could probably sell this for at least 25. I mean, that's not a huge mar. Well, that's at least doubling. And this one though, I'm very unsure of. Since I can't find out the signature, I, I don't know how realistically, how much you could get for it if you wanted to sell it but they're all for my personal collection, so I don't care, I like them. All right, on to the next one. Next up, I got this box here. Don't get your hopes up. We're still in the barware theme. There's no gold coins in here, but let's see what this is. You guys ready? Go, reveal. Reveal. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> very anticlimactic because, well, they, they looked nice on, on the pictures. I've been looking for barware glasses to complete my barware section. Cristalera Fumo, made in Italy. So I put in a bid and I won them for $37. And I was, I was excited. Then I come home, I look at them, I start doing my research, and then I realize, ah, not a great buy. Maybe these are some mass produced glasses by an Italian company. Nah. If knowing what I know now, the next time I see a, a box like this, or next time I see these classes, I won't buy them. $37, that is probably what you can buy it for online. New maybe, I, I don't know. So. <laughs> Might wanna move that in, no? I like living on the edge, motherfucker. I'm done with my barware. I, yes, yeah, I'm almost, yeah, I'm done with my barware for now. It's, it's been a lot of glass lately, I'm well aware, but that's what I've been getting, so that's what I'm showing. See what this is? This, my friends, R is, R. <laughs> English grammar, it's hard, I'm sorry. This, my friends, is a deer antler, <clears throat> Bone pipe, $21 I paid for this. I think I put in my max bid of $25. What I like doing when I get things, I always like trying them because I'm not a smoker, so what am I gonna buy it and put it on my shelf and never use it? No, I, I want to try it. I wanna see how, how, it, how it works. Does it even work? Yeah, let's, let's, let's try it. That's what I was planning on doing. I, I, I want to try this. 
Got some tobacco here. Got it from a local store in Fall River. The owner, super nice when I came in. I told him, hey, I, I straight up told him that I bought a deer antler pipe. And I said, I want to try it. I've never smoked loose tobacco before. Can you help me out? And he just looked at me and said, yeah, I got some nice stuff for you. So he brought this over. And wow, if you, if you could smell this, it smells so good. Raisins, dates or figs. Damn, it smells good. Sorry, take a smell, sniff this. Yeah, that's good, that, huh? That, that's, it kind of smells like wine, a little bit of a wine. Yeah, it does smell like a deep red wine in a way. I gotta clean off this bowl real quick and then we'll spark it up. I mean, I don't encourage anyone to smoke, to start smoking, you know, be healthy. I don't know how to do this. I don't know, do we just take a little bit, maybe roll it into a ball, and just stuff it in there? Well, it's gotta be some, so. it's gotta be somewhere for the air to come out. And I'm actually curious, I got some hunter friends out there. So if you're watching either Marius or Nick, do, do hunters make bone pipes out of the antlers of the deer they shoot? I don't know. You, you tell me if you know, actually. I'm very curious. Let's try this. Wow. Wow. It has a good taste to it. Tastes really good. I'm not going to lie. It tastes really good. Yeah. And again, don't... The smoke, I don't encourage smoking. I don't know if I need to say this. Yeah, you're, you're, you guys are all adults. Do whatever you want, actually. Pretty cool. It was fun to do. It was fun to try. Got that on my system. Now I can go back to being healthy. We are about, I would say we're almost halfway done here. Well, at least we're halfway done with the items. I got some cool things coming up now, and I'm done with all my drinking and smoking stuff. We're done with that stuff. Now we're going to... We're going into the art world. And I've been into art for a while now. So actually, let's just switch the scenes up so we can bring out the art pieces. Nice, huh? So I'll tell you what this is. So the listing said that this was an antique reverse painting mirror. Whenever I see the word antique anywhere, my, my alarm bells go off a little bit. A lot of times, some people throw around that word antique. Oh, it's old, they say it's antique. It's gotta be at least 100 years old. If it's over 100 years old, it's an antique. So I threw in an offer for this one for $15, and I actually want it for $11. It's in, it's in rougher condition. It's been chipped away a little bit here over the years. There's a ball up here, this ornament, and it's fallen off on the rest of the corners, unfortunately. A little crack up here, that's gone. If you can see the mirror, it looked like it might be dirty in the background, but I have cleaned it. And I think that's a sign of old mirrors. They, they start getting this little deposit or this little, I don't know what to call it. It looks like dust on the backside. Come, this is, this is the most important thing of this piece. And it's reverse painted. So meaning it's been painted on the other side so you would have to, I guess with a p landscape like this, I don't know actually how it will look reverse. I can't really think how it will look, but um, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna try to see if we can figure that out. Totally smooth. You, there's no painting here, so the, there's no- Is it glass? Yeah, it's glass. It's glass. Let's turn it around. It's signs of aging. It's the darkness that the wood get over time. So the nails here. We got the wire going here. You can see it's old. But what I really want to do now is that I want to get on the back side of this to see the painting, the mirror painting. And I'm going to be very careful because sometimes even for old frames, the frames are more valuable than the art piece or the piece that's in it. Two screws here, and then it's just tiny nails around. I got my tools there. Just a little, oh shit, what's this called in English? A uh, crowbar. A crowbar. And a hammer. And a screwdriver. Honestly, flatheads are probably the worst type of screw. The, the nails are already working themselves out. 
So this is the first time I'm doing a work myself donor because these are coming right off. Maybe it's a copy of the Declaration of Independence behind here. So this is gonna be a first for me. I haven't seen what's behind here yet. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. This is, this is what I love. This is thrilling. Treasure hunt right here. All right, let's see. Okay. Let's see, what do we have here? Well, I'll take it back. I, I don't think anyone has been in here for a while because it's very dusty. Seeing all this dust here? Pieces of wood holding in the frame on both the mirror and this. Well, if you see really clear hair, you can see how they painted this. So they painted it reverse style. And then, wow, that looks really good with light coming through on it. Wow. Damn. Oh my God. Hey, do you see this on her? It looks like the fingerprints. Well, let's see if I get it. Damn, this is wicked cool, guys. So I didn't see this before, but it looks like the artist has used his or her fingers to, to tap the color to, to get the sky in here. This is just really cool. Wow, this is hands down now my favorite piece of the day. I don't even care. I got some cool stuff coming up, but this is pretty sweet. Wow. That was fun. Damn. That was worth it. That was worth $11. And that was worth opening up the backside of it. Wow. I I'm thrilled. That was killer. That was so nice. Whew. Hell yeah. Next item. Whoo. Fat. Do you have a fat? Okay, we're back again. We took a quick break because we just watched SpaceX launch uh, Inspiration 4 into space. And man, that was exciting. Nerve wracking. I mean, SpaceX have been shooting up and landing rockets now, boosters for a while. They know their stuff. Uh, Elon and the crew at SpaceX, the team at SpaceX, they're unreal. All right, anyways, let's get back to the show. I got three posters or prints to show you now, and we're gonna run through them real quick. We're not gonna be spending too much time on it. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the one I got hanging up on the wall over here. Ah! So obviously this is just a print or a poster from a museum, because if you see under here, the original of this piece was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 1987. I just got it because I liked it. I like artwork of nude women. Oh. They're just cool. I like the style. It's something about it. So this right here is painted by an artist that lived, that died in early 1920s. His name was Amadeo Modigliani. This piece here is called The Seated Nude. The woman was his lover. He only had one exhibition showing off his art pieces in Paris. This one, the original, alongside his other nude works, were displayed, but police came and said, nope, have to take it down, have to take it down. It's too vulgar. Can you believe that, Sonny? It was too vulgar for the time. They did not want it up on display for the public to see, so they made it take it down because of the vulgarity of, is that a word, vulgarity? I don't know. Yeah, the only thing that's vulgar here is that bush. <laughs> Besides that, it's pretty great. No, I'm just kidding. A little bush has never hurt anyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't, we can't give this shit on. Oh, oh man, I'm getting sweaty now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, anyway, sorry about my inappropriate jokes. I don't care. That, that was pretty funny, I thought, at least. <laughs> okay, cool piece. It's hanging up on my wall here. I like cabinet. Just unique. I mean, if I was going to get the original of this one, it would be millions and millions and millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. I just paid $15 for this. Nice print in a wooden frame. Yeah, pretty cool. 
another poster print from a museum, from an expedition at a museum. This exhibition took place in 1991, year I was born actually, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was just a color that spoke to me. Nine dollars for this piece. It was painted by an artist called Andre Durain, um, painted in 1906, and the piece is called Red Sails. I like it, it has nice, fun colors on it. I, I imagine it's gonna look really good in a room, kind of big, open room white or, or very light colors and I think this will pop out on the wall really well. So that's the reason why I picked up this and I'm, I'm very happy with it. It looks nice. And here's my second piece. They look very similar because they're both painted in the same time and they're by the same artist I found out. Man, it's, it's beautiful. I really, really like the colors. That one and the other piece on the wall next to each other, maybe opposite walls, it's gonna look great. That concludes the art pieces of today's show. But we got some, we got more stuff coming. We got some cool pieces coming now. Let's switch gears, right here. Let's start with the piece I got. So the vase here is a Japanese vase, and I think it's called a Usubata or Yusubata. This goes along with the creation that's on top. And so what I try to do here with this creation on top is that I try to dive into the Japanese art form of Ikebana. Don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And I made this and I, I was I was pumped. I was proud of this. I paid $46 for this. So Ikebana, the art of arranging flowers, is an old Japanese art form. And honestly, you can dive very deep into this and it's a it's a lot to learn. So if you're interested in flower arrangements or or Japanese art forms, definitely look into it because it's very, it's a very interesting read, but I'm not gonna go deep in because I don't know too much about it. It's a killer piece, there's these cool dragons on the side. They have these nice little creature looking things for legs. And yeah, it's an awesome piece. It comes into two pieces. Here you go, I'll show this later. We already got some flowers here. So these next three items, there were a lot that I paid $5 for. They're cut glass, cut crystal, just very simple, very fun vases, bud vases. Yeah, it's not much to say about them. There's no maker, maker's mark on them. They all, they're all crack free, they all match each other. So that's cool. Actually, this one's, it has a little stain on it. If you ever come in trouble with your wife, your girlfriend, why don't you just put a rose in it, give it to her, saying sorry for not doing the dishes on time, or sorry for not painting the wall they were supposed to paint. Fill it up with water, give it to her, and everything's good. Or that one came in a little short. But you could also do this. There you go. Give one for your girlfriend, one to your boyfriend, and one for yourself. I don't care, whatever you want to do. I'll give them all to your girlfriend, whatever. Pretty cool. $1.25 a piece. And imagine just for Valentine's Day doing something like this. Why don't you just give a glass too? It doesn't cost you much. Things don't need to cost you much. It's just having fun and being a little creative and there you go. This is a home remedy for getting out of trouble. I basically have three potions right here to get on the good side. All right, cool. Almost done here. And the last piece of the day, this is violin. And the reason I bid on this is because my Cassandra, my brother Sandra, right behind the camera there, he's a violin player. Played his most of his life. So I figured I'd get it, see, see if he could tell me anything about it. I, I don't know anything about violins. You know what? Why don't we have the man himself give a little review of this thing? All right, so. You know, it was listed as a viola. We thought originally that I was gonna go pick up, I actually picked up all these items uh, for Morgan this time around. And when I came over, I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, this is not a viola. This is a uh, violin. And first of all, the way you can tell it's a violin, it's obviously the size. A viola is it's much larger. It creates a deeper sound. If we just take a quick look at this one. So as you can tell here, Here's a uh, crack that's been restored. 
It's been, you can see there's some glue in here. I don't know if it's been restored professionally. Uh, the best way to tell is to actually open the violin up. And then you have this massive crack um, over here. Let me see. Let me... Actually, it's gotten better over the summer. When you first got this, it was much worse. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I guess the humidity has kind of warped itself back a little bit. I don't think it's very symmetrical. And the back is actually really nice. Um, if we look inside, there should be a, a Maker's Mark Wallace. Wallace Gedron. Gedron, Wallace Gedron, uh, made in 1907. Yeah, it's, it's a cool piece. I don't think this is my, oh shit. All right, that's it. My favorite piece today was most likely that mirror with the painting on it. That was a lot of fun breaking that up and seeing the back of it. And yeah, well, did you have a favorite piece today, Sandra? Yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed the mirror. Uh, it was it was exciting to check out the violin. Yeah, that was that was cool. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. This was a fun episode. There was some cool stuff today. And subscribe if you like this like it share it and would love to hear back from you if you had a favorite piece comment in the comment section and yeah until next time stay timeless Let's get home. Oh, I can't slow down.